pleased to be joined by our friend and colleague and newly elected VPCC chair, uh, Debbie Dingle, uh, our classmate, uh, Ted Liu, and Debbie and I all came in together in the class of 2014, and we're honored to stand up here with her. Congratulations, Debbie. I want to begin this week by condemning in the strongest possible terms Iran's unprovoked attack against Israel. As missiles and drones rained down on our closest ally in the Middle East over the weekend, the strength of the U.S.-Israel relationship was on full display. We're grateful to President Biden and our military commanders for their work uh, with Israel and regional allies to ensure that lives were saved and damage was minimized. But Congress must show the rest of the world that our support for the safety and security of the Israeli people will never waver. We need to act immediately on aid to Israel, humanitarian assistance for the people in Gaza, and aid for Ukraine. We must send a strong message, not just for our adversary in Iran, but to Russia and China as well. Every day that we delay the consideration of aid to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan, we jeopardize America's role in the free world. Nothing is more important to the pro-Putin wing of the House Republican Conference than re-electing Donald Trump. Not American exceptionalism, not the security of our allies, and not even democracy. The same group that has undermined our ability to support our allies for pushing Russia propaganda on the House floor. And that's what their own members say. It's time for Speaker Johnson to do the right thing and to put this critical funding for an up or down vote. I'll you to Vice Chair Ted Lee. Thank you, Chairman Aguilar, and I uh, agree with what Chairman Aguilar said about the attack on Israel from the Islamic regime in Iran. They sent approximately 120 drones, 30 cruise missiles, and 120 ballistic missiles at Israel. The reason that most of those drones and missiles were shot down is because of the skill of the Israeli Defense Force with funding from the United States for their Iron Dome system, the Aero system, David Sling system, and that's why it's so important that we continue to give Israel the funding it needs to defend itself, including passing the supplemental package that the Senate passed on bipartisan basis. That's the fastest way to get funding to Israel. The other reason that the attack largely failed is because of the skill of the United States Armed Forces in helping to defend Israel, as well as our regional allies, Jordan and the United Kingdom, and they all participate and making sure that these weapons, uh, missiles and drones, are shot down uh, before they could land on Israeli soil. Some did land, and Iran needs to uh, make sure that they never, ever attack Israel again. And one way to do that is to help Israel defend itself. And we call on Speaker Johnson to simply put the Senate bill on the floor. If he did that, it will pass with more than a two-thirds vote. Now it is my extreme pleasure and honor to introduce the new EPCC chair, Debbie Dingo. As Chairman Aguilar said, uh, we came in together with Debbie in the freshman class. I served with Debbie uh, on the DPCC uh, for four years. She did a fantastic job as DPCC co-chair. She's going to do an amazing job as DPCC chair. And look forward to working with Debbie and I want to hear her speak. Thanks, Ted. I don't have a very usual, unusual for me not to have a big risk, but I've been losing it. I want to first of all say how happy I am to be here with Pete and Ted, who have been close friends since the day that I walked in here, Ted and I, um, and I'm very excited to be working with them again, and Ted and I were co-chairs of the DPCC, and I think it's really important to say that I am a partner with Representative Lauren Underwood, Veronica Escobar, and Lori Trahan as the co-chairs. And we are all going to be united. We're going to be a girl team, actually. Um, uh, and for the last year and a half, they have been working tirelessly and done great work along with our former co-chair, Joe uh, Nagoose, who was chair of the DPCC and is now assistant leader. What we're trying to do is to help our caucus communicate with Americans across the country and to really demonstrate that our caucus is putting people over politics. Uh, 
we've got, I look, I'm really looking forward to working with them and these guys. You know, the University of Michigan won this year, in case you missed it, in football. And then I probably, one of, this is a highlight today, but like the highlight, highlight of my life was standing up there at the championship. And I said to the team, Jim Harbaugh taught you all one thing, the value of teamwork. And that's a lesson that he teaches all of us. Teamwork creates victors. Go blue. Okay, that's what we're going to do here, too. Teamwork is going to create victors, and we're going to go blue this year. We've got to help, and I want to work with us. Hakeem is going to be speaker. Catherine is uh, going to be the majority leader. But we got to help make sure our message is bre breaking through. Um, you know, and, and here's the reason. The Republican caucus, their message is chaos. We choose and are united in our commitment every single day to lower everyday costs for families, to access, have everybody to be, have access to and expand access to health care and lower prescription drug prices, protect caregiving, both for child care and senior care, protect our democracy and strengthen our, our national security, and not strengthen it by total chaos and even trying to sort out what bills you're trying to uh, vote on on the floor. As the world becomes increasingly dangerous and unstable, we must continue to stand with our democratic allies. The Ukrainians have bravely pushed back against the Russians. You know that we are seeing dangerous spots all over the world. Iran's attack last weekend. We have to support. We have to we, the world needs to know that America is standing with them, protecting democracy. So thank you very much, and we can't abandon those people in their hour of need. Thank you, Debbie. Other questions? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I want to get your reaction to this package of four bills. I know you're waiting on legislative text, but do you think – Democrats will support them in any way, and if not, as a discharge petition at this point, your only option. Well, we've been very clear, Leader Jeffries has been clear, that all options should remain on the table. Uh, the important point is the substance of the legislation. The substance matters. If, um, uh, and so Democrats look forward to seeing what the plans are to deliver the substance of what the Senate passed bills uh, are. If it meets that test, and that'll be a test done by uh, Chair, uh, Ranking Member Rosa DeLauro, my forever chair in appropriations, um, Greg Meeks, um, Jim Himes. Uh, if those individuals indicate that the substance of the legislation uh, that we are talking about um, meets that test uh, to help Ukraine, help our allies, provide humanitarian assistance, uh, then House Democrats and the leadership team will work uh, to find the process that that, uh, that fits uh, to deliver that. But we're more concerned about the substance right now than we are the process. Um, there's, uh, so I, I think that's what we're what we're focused on, and what we're going to continue to uh, focus on is these next hours of proceed. The Senate bipartisan bill had four components: aid to Israel aid to Ukraine, humanitarian assistance, and aid to the Indo-Pacific. Uh, if Speaker Johnson's version is missing one of these components, it's highly unlikely Democrats would support it. So we're waiting to see what the text is. Just to follow up on that specifically, not just support, would you support the rule if it includes all of these? Uh, you know, let's let's see what the substance looks like. Um, that's a conversation among, um, among the leadership team. Um, but let's see what the substance looks like, and then let's figure out uh, what the process is. Uh, it's up to Speaker Johnson, as we've said before, to deliver uh, votes in the in the Rules Committee and to pass the rules. I know that they have a tough time um, working together and, and passing uh, pieces of legislation or taking down their own rules. Um, we're less concerned about uh, that. We're more concerned about what this what this looks like. But you're not ruling it out. Uh, is, is, as I said to the last answer, I mean, there is there is no option off the table right now uh, from procedural ma measures that bring this uh, directly to the floor uh, to any um, votes that are options. If it delivers, as the vice chair said, if it delivers, 
uh, the four points that we are concerned about, uh, then it should be something that, that is on the table. Nick? There's now two House Republicans who are saying they will support a motion to vacate to oust Johnson. Your caucus could hold his faith in your hands. How would you handle a motion to vacate? Uh, we, we don't like the chaos and the dysfunction. Um, we've been down this road before. Um, believe me, I mean, I, I provided a, a lion's share of those nomination speeches. I'm not itching to do that uh, anymore. Um, but we want this place to work. Uh, we want we want to see uh, aid to Israel and Ukraine, humanitarian assistance, and, and opaque um, uh, priorities. Uh, that's what we're focused on right now. We can't control the theatrics of Marjorie Taylor Greene and the House Republican Conference, um, but we stand willing to work with anyone who wants to deliver on that help and support. Um, on that same question, is there a world where, I know this might have sounded strange 10 years ago, but is there a world where if there's a motion to vacate triggered and the votes work out so that Hakeem Jeffries could become speaker, that you all think it would be good to have a Democratic speaker even with a technical Republican majority? Uh, look, I, I think, um, I feel very confident speaking for the Democratic caucus that uh, we want Hakeem Jeffries to be speaker. Whether that happens uh, in this calendar year or in January, uh, that's the that's the focus. Mathematically, it's it's possible, um, but right now we're just focused on on this week ahead and ensuring that we provide uh, the important support to, to Israel and Ukraine, uh, humanitarian assistance for that region, uh, as well as uh, priorities in the Pacific. So that's that's the focus and the goal. But um, obviously, from a math perspective, um, we can't rule that out. Um, but it's nothing that we're spending a lot of time on right now. So, Speaker Johnson said uh, yesterday that he will speak to uh, Leader Jeffries uh, about this this plan of his. Uh, has there been any communication? Do you have any any idea what he's going to put in those bills? Uh, that's a, that's a question for uh, for the Speaker um, and, the, and the Leader. I know they had a conversation. Uh, he indicated that in the, in the leadership meeting. Um, we're still waiting on the substance, as I said, uh, that, that part matters. Um, we've seen some of the readouts um, uh, that Speaker Johnson has conveyed to his conference. Uh, and, and like the Vice Chair said, there are some important pieces that need to be uh, included. So once we have more clarity on, on that, um, we're willing to work uh, to devise a, a process uh, that brings these bills to the floor and gets them, more importantly, uh, to the President's desk. Uh, that's what the focus is right now. I hate to beat a dead horse, but the reality is that we're hearing this motion to vacate could come within the next 24 to 48 hours, which means there could be a forced either motion to table or we have to potentially deal with this before we talk about foreign aid. So are you saying that there are no conversations happening behind closed doors with Democrats right now about motion to table it in order to get to the foreign aid at this juncture? Uh, I'm telling you, we had a two-hour caucus meeting, and, and this didn't come up. Uh, our caucus is focused on the results, uh, governing, and uh, ensuring that we provide uh, this important assistance uh, as Ukraine fights for their uh, fights for their freedom. Uh, that's what is important and timely. Uh, there shouldn't be anything that distracts us. <coughs> From that, and we just want to ensure that there's a process uh, to bring those bills to the floor and to get them to the president's desk as quickly as possible. Uh, that's been the focus and the, and the goal of the House Democratic Caucus um, over the past few weeks. That's why we have been calling time and time again in this podium and in every hallway you catch me in uh, for the speaker to bring the Senate passed bill, bipartisan bill with 70 supporters on it, uh, directly uh, to the floor. Uh, that is the fastest and most efficient way to deliver aid to Ukraine. That should have been done weeks ago. Uh, we're, we're here. And so uh, we stand ready to help to make that happen uh, before uh, Congress adjourns for the week. Last question. I know you like to stay focused on what's going on on this side of the Capitol, but let's say these bills do somehow make it <clears throat> to the Senate. Are you concerned that some Senate progressives may reject, whether it's unconditional aid to Israel or some <clears throat> components of the package and we end up back at square one. How are you feeling about what's going on over in the Senate? Have you had any conversations with Senate Democrats about how they're feeling about this kind of broken up um, package that got 70 votes as one complete package earlier this year? Yeah. 
All of the discussions uh, at this point should include Senate Democrats. Uh, there isn't anything that Speaker Johnson uh, proposes that uh, uh, does not meet the test of what House Republicans have indicated, but also uh, that Senate Democrats uh, can deliver in a bipartisan way. Uh, so my understanding is that legislative leaders have been having those discussions, and that Senator Schumer and the White House also been part of these discussions. This isn't anything that we're looking to do in a vacuum. Uh, we need to ensure that all five corners uh, have agreement in order to proceed because ultimately the focus is delivering aid and getting this to the President's desk and signed into law as quickly as possible. That's the focus and the mission. Um, so, uh, so working with uh, our colleagues uh, on the other side of the dome is, is absolutely uh, part of the process. Mayorkas, impeachment. Uh, Thank you. Um, given the urgency that you are emphasizing here, um, in the best case scenario, if these four bills pass and then the package together and go to the Senate, you guys are going next week, Senate's going next week, they come back in two weeks and, and they move slower than you do, it's not impossible to, uh, to imagine that they could change it and send it back. I mean, um, this is not going to happen quickly. Um, with that in mind, wouldn't the best case for you guys be to sink this plan that Johnson's got, and you've already got Republicans over there who say they're going to sign on to a discharge petition, bring the Senate bill to the floor, and get it done before these recesses. We don't, we don't want to sink any plan that delivers uh, aid to, to our allies and that meets this test. Uh, so our focus is on delivering this. Uh, we're, uh, like I mentioned, we're less concerned on what process is used. Um, if there is a reasonable process that legislative leaders uh, on both sides of the Capitol agree on with the White House, uh, then we look forward to making this happen um, by the end of the week. But this needs to happen by the end of the week. There is some urgency here. Uh, so we look forward to working with our colleagues uh, in order to deliver that, uh, no matter the process. Thank you so much.